So what were the best episodes of Lost in Space Season 1? Let's find out. Movies, music, and monsters. Hey guys, Dan Monroe here, Media Master Design, where we talk about movies, music, and monsters. The best episodes of season one, now keep in mind, this is simply my opinion. I'm going to be hitting a lot of the major ones, but if I leave any out that happen to be your favorites, let me know in the comments below. Season one of Lost in Space was the black and white episodes, and man were they great. Real fantastic sci-fi adventure stories. Now the first five episodes of season one were actually taken from the pilot of Lost in Space, so they took all that pilot footage, added Smith and the robot, and put them out as the first five episodes. And they were awesome. Obviously, I really liked the first episode, The Reluctant Stowaway, because that was the episode that launched Lost in Space not only into our homes, but into our hearts. I've watched the unaired pilot, but I think the first five episodes with Smith and the robot make it much more entertaining and exciting. The second show, The Derelict, great shots of the Jupiter 2 flying around that derelict spaceship, which was, in fact, the same ship that we saw in the first episode of the third season, Condemned of Space, just slightly retouched. And even cooler, this was the first time we got to see the full-scale mock-up of the Jupiter 2 set. Now, keep in mind that the interior shots of the Jupiter 2, that was a different set and shot on a completely different soundstage. But this thing was so cool, you could actually see the actor up in the windows. They really only used that full scale mock up a few times, but when they did, man, it looked great. Roddy McDowell, the guy who played Cornelius and Galen in all the Planet of the Apes movies and TV shows, one day he was flying in a helicopter over top of 20th Century Fox and he was filming home movies. Well, if you look real close, there's the Jupiter 2. How cool is that? Island in the Sky, one of my favorites, the third episode. Starts off with Smith sabotaging John's parajets while playing chess with the robot. As a kid, I thought that was so cool, the robot plays chess. Amazing crash sequence of the Jupiter 2, actually the Gemini 12. Luckily, Irwin Allen was smart enough to film all that cool special effects stuff in color so that they could use them in later seasons. And they did. We met Debbie the Bloop. 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 which looked suspiciously like a monkey in a furry hat. It's really kind of funny that Penny loved Debbie the Bloop so much, and we rarely saw the thing ever again, other than her huge role in The Oasis. Literally huge. Probably my all-time favorite show of season one, Episode 4, There Were Giants in the Earth. It's the first time we actually see Dr. Smith really going out of his way to avoid working. What a shame. You've almost finished. It's the show where Will Robinson basically stops being afraid of the robot, which again was an order that came right from the network executives to Irwin Allen to soften the Smith and robot character to make them a little more family friendly. Man, there's a scene when Will lets the robot get away accidentally and John, the father, comes and talks to him. I remember as a kid feeling so guilty after I heard that speech. We lost a piece of valuable equipment that we needed very badly. Wow, I mean, I felt guilty. And of course, the giant. Oh man, how cool was this guy? The giant was actually played by two different actors who wore diving suits that were literally covered in tree bark and the scream of the cyclops. <laughs> Pretty scary stuff, boys and girls. There was actually an extra giant scene that was planned, but never actually filmed. The scene involved Smith and the robot going outside the ship and actually running into the giant. Smith, of course, freaks out, and he orders the robot to shoot his electric bolts at the giant. What a great scene that would have been, but they never filmed it. Some interesting insight as to how editing can actually change a story. In the pilot, they shot the giant, and then later on in the pilot, they run into literally a second giant. 
meaning that there's more than one giant on this planet. However, when it came to editing the pilot footage into the first five episodes, they shot an extra scene of the giant getting up off the ground to make it look like it was the same giant. Maybe the network thought that having a planet full of giants might just have been a little too creepy for family hour. <laughs> Who knows? The fifth episode, Hungry Sea, fantastic special effects. But again, most of those special effects were all pulled from the pilot, other than all the stuff of Smith and the Robot back at the Jupiter 2, keeping an eye on the temperature, which was dropping rapidly. Even though it was to save his own neck, Smith actually seemed to really care whether or not the Robinsons survived. On the contrary, I'm attempting to save your miserable necks which was a little bit of a crack in his armor. You're in terrible danger, you've got to believe me! And we see this really interesting clash of personalities between John and Don about what they should be doing to survive. It's too bad there isn't judgment to go along with that self-confidence. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to try to save your life along with the others. Good stuff. Great writing. Invaders from the Fifth Dimension was cool. I like that show. I thought it was neat that when Smith ran into the aliens at the beginning, they didn't speak English. Something we rarely ever saw again in this show, unfortunately. Really, honestly, quite a dark story. These aliens show up, and in order to fix their ship, they need a new computer or... A humanoid brain. A what? Wow. And of course, Dr. Smith is the first one to raise his hand and go, Oh no, not me. But I know where you can find some of those pesky Robinsons. Cool little robot tidbit. If you watch the robot as he's walking towards the ship at the end, you can actually very plainly see Bob May's feet just shuffling along. And in the end, I felt really kind of bad for the aliens. They died. Return from outer space. I have sort of mixed emotions about this one. This particular episode came out in December, and it's kind of known as the Lost in Space Christmas show, I guess, because it takes place in a tiny little town, and it's very quaint. And for some reason, even in the year 1997, this town looks like it's from the 1940s. Will and the robot discover an abandoned Koron matter transfer unit on the planet, which of course they rapidly figure out how to use and zap Will right back to Earth. His mission? Find carbon tetrachloride for the food purifiers. And he does. Carbon tetrachloride! But as a kid, it really bothered me when Will's about ready to get on the bus to become a foster kid and the Bullies come after him, and they talk about his parents' bones floating around in space. Everyone that was on that ship's dead. I like the show, but I wouldn't consider it a favorite. Wish Upon a Star. Man, there was a lot of stuff going on in this particular episode as well. We begin seeing the relationship between Will and Smith start coming together. And you can tell that Will really does care about Dr. Smith. I brought you some breakfast. Ah, oh, that was kind of you, my boy. I really love the stuff at the beginning of this episode with Don doing that whole Smith I oughta stuff. I don't know how the others feel, Smith, but I'm fed up to the teeth with you. Really spooky cinematography when Dr. Smith is out alone at night looking around when that pancake monster comes flying over the top. Really spooky stuff. This show is one of the few times that we actually got to see one of the actual Jupiter 2 filming miniatures on set as a prop. Interesting Lost in Space tidbit, when they were filming the pilot, you could see the whole Jupiter 2 on the set, the desert set. You could see the top of the ship, you could see the bubble, but when they went to series, they put a lot of stuff on top of the ship, equipment, lighting stuff, and they never showed it. If you notice, there's always something just blocking off the top of the ship in every shot, so all that equipment wasn't seen. Wonderful interdimensional space alien at the end with that great classic Lost in Space sound effect. <coughs> ah, The Keeper, the only two-part Lost in Space episode ever made. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this episode because I am planning another video with a deep dive specifically into this two-part Keeper episode, so stay tuned for that.
Michael Rennie, huge star in Hollywood that everybody pretty much recognized from the day the earth stood still. You can definitely see the Dr. Smith character really starting to get goofy. Out of the way, I am being summoned. Still doing whatever he can to avoid working, holding his breath like a five-year-old. There's another shot in this episode where if you look close and quickly, you can see Bob May's pants sticking out of the robot legs as he steps up on the side of the ravine. Somewhere in my collection, I have a really cool color shot that was taken on the set of Filming the Keeper. And here it is. Look at that beautiful first season Lost in Space color set. We do see a very small amount of affection here between Don and Judy. They couldn't do any more. The network wouldn't allow it. Family hour, you know. The Keeper character was so interesting, and he had that cool staff that made that amazing Lost in Space sound. You know it. The Sky Pirate with Captain Tucker. <laughs> I like this show. I really enjoyed the dynamic between Captain Tucker and Will as he searched for his nucleonic planet buster. <laughs> the aliens looked suspiciously like large blown up garbage bags. One thing that was cool about this show is that Bob May, the guy inside the robot, brought in his home film camera and shot a whole ton of color footage... Shots of the set, shots of the ship, shots of the actors clowning around, and some really cool footage of Bob actually getting into the robot costume, first season, in color. Great stuff. Ghost in Space. I have mixed emotions about this one because it seems like it's one episode that's kind of cut right down the middle. The beginning is really interesting and Dark Dr. Smith with a Ouija board? This weird, invisible ghost of Dr. Smith's dead Uncle Thaddeus? Who ended up being a three-toed cyclops with really big feet. It's a good show. I wouldn't say it's a favorite, but I do enjoy watching it around Halloween time. Oh man, War of the Robots. The first of two appearances by Robbie the Robot on Lost in Space. Now keep in mind that this was still the actual Robbie the Robot suit that was in Forbidden Planet. Later on, during the 70s and 80s, when you saw Robbie, it was a replica. If you want to know more about Robbie the Robot, I have a whole video dedicated just to him. Link in the description. This was a great show because it really showed Will and the robot starting to bond as true friends. As a kid, I really felt bad for the robot when they started ignoring him and making him feel like he wasn't useful anymore. Can I help anyone? No one requires my services anymore. But in the end, the robot wins victorious by using his rarely seen soil sample door to put up a fog screen and destroy the evil robotoid with the classic line, You have destroyed me. But then I always wondered, what did they do with the robotoid? Nah, stick him in the corner of the ship. We'll use him for something. Yes, I know, I kind of skipped over the Penny shows, Mr. Nobody, and the Magic Mirror. They were actually really good shows. But as a 10-year-old kid, I wanted to see what Smith, Will, and the Robot were up to. I like them, just not my favorites. The Challenge, with Quano, the son of the ruler, played by a very young Kurt Russell. The incredible Michael and Sarah as the ruler, who I always thought was Yul Brenner when I watched the show. Give me a break. He was bald. I was 10. And I just know that somebody on the writing team said, hey, that guy used to be Zorro. Let's use that. And we got to see Guy Williams put down the laser pistol and pick up his Zorro sword. So cool. This show was also the first time that the robot ever laughed. <laughs> and more importantly, this was the first show that Dr. Smith ever called the robot a bubble-headed booby. Are you laughing at me, you bubble-headed booby? A truly wonderful show about the strength and bonding of fathers and sons. Definitely not something you're going to see on TV in 2024. Ah, the space trader. Kind of goofy, kind of fun. I liked it because it was a heavy robot show. 
Dr. Smith, of course, trades the robot for food. And you can really see that incredible, ridiculous side of Jonathan Harris's comedic character coming right to the foreground. Most people didn't really realize that Smith was goofy and silly in the first season. He really was. In fact, I have a whole other video called Why Did Lost in Space Change? Check it out. Link in the description. His Majesty Smith. Dr. Smith comes across a crown and is later anointed king and learns to drink glug and make Sleemoth. A really, really strange show. Starts off rather comedic with the crown and nexus and then turns really, really dark with that hairy Wolfman Jack guy. You can definitely see Jonathan Harris's acting chops coming out in this show. He was just terrified during some of those scenes. <laughs> Kudos to him. They did some really cool split screening in the second half with Dr. Smith and Daddy Zack, and it had kind of a cool twist ending. Oh, God. The space croppers. And we got here. Look at my goodness. <laughs> In my opinion, the absolute worst of season one. Unless you liked it. If you did, great. Now, the next two shows, All That Glitters and The Lost Civilization, were actually filmed at the same time. The Lost Civilization had John, Don, Will, and the robot, and All That Glitters had everybody else. They were so pressed for time to get these shows out that they literally split the cast in half with two different filming crews just to get these shows done. The Lost Civilization is okay. The whole underground thing with the army and the guy who looked like he was out of Flash Gordon. Now, All That Glitters, great show. You really get the sense in this show that Smith actually felt guilt and remorse for what he did to Penny. Something we really hadn't seen all that much up until this point. A change of space, definitely one of my favorites. Will Smith and the robot, of course, stumble across an alien ship that somehow they get functioning, and when you take a ride, weird stuff happens to you. Will becomes a genius. Dr. Smith becomes an old man. Really over-the-top and fun performance by Jonathan Harris as this character. In fact, if you watch close, there's a scene where Mark Goddard is having dialogue with Jonathan, and Mark is laughing so hard he has to bite his lip and turn away. The ships in this show were cool, although they were originally used in the episode The Raft, and also used on Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, and the alien was on Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Interesting that this show was the very last time that we ever saw the Robinson family look at the robot as a robot, a machine, like a piece of equipment. From the next show on, all the way to the end of the series, you never saw that again. As you know, every episode of Lost in Space ends with a cliffhanger, and that's where Batman got it. Same bat time, same bat channel, Lost in Space. And that brings us finally to the last episode of Lost in Space Season 1, Follow the Leader. Man, was this show dark. John Robinson possessed by the spirit of an ancient alien. I will take over your body. Really spooky stuff when John's asleep and they keep showing that empty chair like there's something sitting there. I am already deep in your mind. Freaked me out as a kid and still does. He is possessed by an alien spirit. Super strange choice for a storyline in the mid-60s family hour. But Guy Williams was great. Really good acting chops in this one. And he once again got to use a little bit of his Zorro stuff. And I'll never forget the first time I saw this episode, in the very last scene where John is almost ready to push Will off the cliff. You're going to push me off, aren't you? Yes, Will Robinson, I am. That was it. It went straight to credits. The last scene wasn't there. It was years before I finally found out what happened. So that was the end of season one Lost in Space, a terrific adventure show, which quickly turned into being something quite different for season two. But that, my friends, is the topic of a different video. I really hope you liked that retrospect on my personal favorites of Lost in Space season one. But what were yours? What were your favorite episodes and why? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this kind of stuff, please consider subscribing. The channel has just taken off in the last month, and I want to thank all of you for that.
Don't be a stranger. Stop back anytime as we continue talking about movies, music, and monsters. Movies, music, and monsters.